Hello, in this video, I'm gonna show you all the gear I took with me to ride the Highland Trail 550 bikepacking race. Now the Highland Trail 550 um, is a, well, kind of says what it is on the tin. It's a 550 mile bikepacking race around Scotland, uh, end of May. Generally, conditions can be quite variable. This year we had excellent conditions, um, pretty dry, uh, no rain, um, but you're still in the far north of Scotland, so it can be quite changeable. So this is the gear I took for that. And I'll also add in um, what I would have taken if the weather was a bit more changeable. So I'll start off with the kind of the base um, gear I was wearing. So as you can see, um, I, was, I was wearing a merino base layer. So this is the Albion merino uh, base layer. Merino is really good when it's damp um, or changeable temperatures and it doesn't smell too much. So I'd, I'd always favor that, especially good in Scotland. Um, you know, it, it did get quite cold at night um, and the first couple of days there was quite a cold northerly wind. So that just kept a bit of heat um, in the core. I'm then riding um, in Albion's jersey. Um, excellent, just fits well, does what it needs to do. Nothing really more to say on that, um, apart from it looks cool. And then I was running Albion's cargo bib shorts. Um, I use them for everything and they work fine. Especially good having the rear pocket to, to you know, put um, jackets in and things like that. Um, and the, the, the leg pockets were really good um, for, for carrying food and getting stuff. The next layer of protection I had was this Albion Ultralight Gilet. Now I just probably keep this in my rear pocket, put it on and off, it take the wind chill off. Um, and it's really light and foldable. Uh, and also this would fit over my hydration vest as well. So I could just chuck it on and off um, without too much hassle. Um, so yeah, this was a you know, in, invaluable piece of kit. So the next stage of keeping warm was arm and leg warmers. Um, now I'm really quite tall and skinny, so I struggled to get arm and leg warmers that fit. Um, in the end, I had these, uh, I think these were ASOS. I've had them for years, they're pretty worn out. Um, but they do the job. So I, I, again, keep those in my rear pocket and I ended up using those quite a lot. Um, and then I just had these you know, DHB leg warmers, again, fit quite long skinny legs. Um, I went for full leg warmers over knee warmers, uh, mainly because I wanted to be able to cover all my skin, um, you know, at night and stuff, it could get quite cold. Um, so I felt knee warmers would be, um, you know, a bit, bit too chilly. But when it did get a bit colder, there's a few little accessories I also used to keep warm. Um, so I used the Albion uh, Merino neck warmer, um, just, to, just to keep my neck warm, I get quite a cold neck. Um, and I think you lose a lot of heat from there. There's a lot of blood vessels. So yeah, always try and keep that warm and you can pull it up over your chin. Also just a cycling cap. This is a hunt one, keeps a bit of heat in your head. Also, if it's really rainy, you can pull the, the peak down and stop uh, rain getting your eyes. I use these DHB air on mitts um, predominantly because I find them super comfortable. They've got like a, it's almost like a chamois for a pad um, and it, it works really well. But when it, get cold, when it got colder, I put these long fingered XC gloves on. I think they're by Grip Wrap um, just to again, keep the chill off. And if it got ex ex especially cold, I'd then put my Descent 133 rain gloves over the top. Now these would have been invaluable had it been raining the whole time. As it didn't really rain, um, these were more just to keep a little bit warm. I also took quite a few pairs of socks. These are past their best. Um, they've been used quite heavily. These are just merino ones. I think they're from POC, um, but they're fairly generic merino socks. I probably should have taken more pairs. I took three. Uh, one pair didn't make it um, past halfway. Fell in a bog. They were disgusting. It had the binum. Um, but yeah, I tried to, my feet were getting quite wet um, and quite sore. So I tried to change my socks regularly and there was times I just had to stop for 10 minutes, just take everything off and air it out. The shoes I used, um, I've used them for the, well, for two editions of Highland Trail 550. They're Shimano's ME5. Now they've got a really good sole. They're really good for hiking. Um, and in the previous edition, 2021, it was really wet. Um, so I, so your feet were gonna be wet, wet regardless. But I found in this edition, they weren't drying very quickly, so my feet got like probably in worse condition than they should have. I think if I'd had a slightly lighter shoe, they would have um, dried out easier. Um, so yeah, that's something I'll think about uh, for future editions if it's not like tipping it down. Um, but yeah, so I just it's uh, it's one of those things that you, you kind of don't think about until it it becomes a problem. So that's covered the basic kind of um, kit. Um, and, and that's enough to kind of modulate your heat for, for most sort of riding conditions. However, there's a, there's a few pieces of kit that I used um, for riding for when the conditions got worse. The first one is this lightweight, ultra lightweight uh, insulated jacket from Albion. 
with the custom modification. Um, so this is normally great to keep a bit of warmth on while you're riding. Um, but I got the guys at Albion to put an extra insulated panel in the back and also this funky custom uh, neck warmer. Um, as I said before, I get quite a cold neck, um, so this is really invaluable. And I'd ride with this at night or if uh, the conditions were quite cold in the morning. I'd also put it on when I slept just to keep a bit more heat in. So I'll chuck it on now and show you the neck. So this is the neck collar. Um, it's, it's custom um, from Albion. The, I'm very lucky they, they, they listen to my um, annoying requests and and pander to them which is excellent so thanks to everyone at Albion um, as you can see I've got this this collar on here and I basically I used a version of this last year it was a jacket with a hood and a high collar um, but I found that I didn't really end up using the hood it was a bit too much for faff because it fitted under the helmet but I always used the the collar just to sort of wrap around my neck going down descents or when it got cold just to really keep the heat in there so this um, this is just really useful and you can then fold it away out the back. So it's just all about modulating heat. Um, so yeah, I find this really invaluable. And again, when you're sleeping at night, you can put this on to keep warmer. One of the most important factors to get right for the Holland Trail 550, regardless of uh, forecast conditions, is rain gear. I went for a Albion Zoa rain shell. Um, I was very tempted to take a lighter weight jacket, um, but in the end, I decided it's just not worth it. So yeah, this is really well proven for me. Um, just just does a job, keeps you dry. It's got a hood which comes up over your helmet um, and, and you can really like keep all the elements out there. So I can chuck that up like that and then do it up. And then you're really, <laughs> really well protected. Um, you can see you can get right up around your neck. Um, just keep the rain out, um, you know, and it, I use it as some tour divide in some terrific weather. So I'm very confident in it um, and yeah, it folds down fairly well, nice cuffs on it, a long back and you've got pockets on the side. So for this particular race, because it didn't rain much, um, I didn't have to hunker down inside the jacket. However, I did use it um, early morning to keep warm and at night to keep warm. Um, and it was I mean, just absolutely invaluable. The other part of my rain gear was my rain shorts. Now these were another little custom thing from Albion. So you may see they have the Zoa rain trousers. Um, well, these are basically Zoa rain trousers cut off at the knee. Um, with a few slight modifications. I decided that I didn't need to take the full rain trousers for this event due to the forecast, um, and I would rather save a bit of weight. Um, and yeah, these are excellent. They're just a little bit quicker to get on and off um, and easier to roll up than rain trousers. Um, and again, it didn't actually rain, but I used them in the morning first thing when I was just getting going. It's really good just, even if it's like 20 minutes, just to get the heat back in your body after sleeping. Um, and there were times when it was pretty chilly on descent, so I just stopped and, and put them on in like 30 seconds just to save, save energy. If you're warm, you're not burning so much energy. So yeah, that is the custom rain trousers um, from, from Albion. If, I were, if the conditions were going to be terrible, I would take the full length ones without a doubt um, and pair them with this, this jacket and then I think I'd be um, pretty well covered. So the final bit of gear, which has uh, been staring at you the whole time, Helmet, a nice POC helmet, Team Armani edition. Um, you need to wear one, these work really well. And then these Smith, uh, I think these are Attack Mags um, sunglasses, kind of match the paint on my bike, um, which is always good. Again, they do the job, keep the sun out your eyes, keep that out your eyes, and um, exactly what you want out of a pair of glasses. Now there's one final piece of kit, which I've not shown you yet, and that is my insulated gilet. Now the final piece of the kit puzzle is this. Um, again, some custom kit from Albion. So essentially it's a Albion lightweight Zoa insulated jacket with the arms cut off to make a gilet. Um, so basically I wanted to make it a little bit lighter than that. I didn't want to have to carry the whole jacket because the temperatures were looking reasonable. Um, so yeah, they basically hack the arms off for me. Um, so yeah, I'm a fan of an insulated gilet um, and I kept this in a dry bag and um, this was basically for sleeping and like my one piece of dry kit. So even if it rains, it was always gonna be dry um, and I wouldn't ride in it. Um, but you know, if I had to, I could ride. So yeah, this is, that's that. And I also just had a little merino hat in there as well. Um, it's actually from Pock. Um, I just wear that at night just to keep the heat in. Um, and yeah, and this, this worked really well. So there we have it. That is all the kit I used to ride the 2023 Harland Trail 550. I hope you liked this video and found it interesting. Don't forget to put any questions down in the comments and I'll get back to you on them. Do the old liking and subscribing thing. And yeah, keep a lookout for my bike check video. Uh, there'll be my race video and also check out my video on what I ate during the Harland Trail 550. Thanks for watching. See you soon.